Jeremy Shapiro is research director at the European Council on Foreign Relations and used to work at the US State Department advising Hillary Clinton on the Middle East. Emily Thornberry is the shadow foreign secretary. Very good evening to you both. Um, Jeremy, I'm interested in your sort of slightly more external perspective. Do you think perhaps the expectation that sort of Boris goes in and says this is what we'd like, everybody gathers around and then says yes or no, is that, that the wrong way of thinking about it? Yeah, I think it's probably a bit outdated. I know that the that Great Britain has a great history of, of diplomacy. It likes to think of itself as a great power. But the truth is that uh, it's been a medium power for, for decades now, and it's, it's punched above its weight during those decades because it has had a good relationship with the United States and because it's been a member of the European Union. And, and it's actually managed to sort of work both sides of that aisle and punch above its weight diplomatically. But with the Brexit decision, those days are sort of over. And you see that, that Britain needs to align itself ever more closely with the United States. And that means that it has less influence both with the United States and with its European partners. Oh, less partners. influence with the United States because you're a taker Because you have nowhere to go. Giver. You have nowhere to go. Do, yeah. do, do you accept that, Emily Thornberry? I think there is an analysis which is that we've kind of navigated our foreign policy between the European Union and America and our relationships with both are profoundly changing. But I think that you underplay the many positives that we have as a country, which means that we can continue to punch above our weight. So we have a place in the Security Council. Now, we don't need to be second fiddle to the Americans at the Security Council. We could have a distinctive voice. People speak English. We have a huge amount of soft power. We, we spend you know, vast amounts of money on, on you know, on aid. Yeah, we we have the world's biggest, I think, one yeah, Americans let's know, go to that uh, thing. A very large proportion of the world's leaders have been educated in Britain. At a you know very important time in their lives, they fall in love with our country. We we spend a large amount of money on, on defense. I think Boris Johnson we, has written this article there. No, 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 no. I'll tell you I'll tell you the difference. All right, I'll tell you the difference that I've got with Boris. I think that in order to be influential, you have to have you see today was about tactics and it was completely the wrong tactic. And what you should be doing is taking advantage of the fact that we have a massive brains trust in the, in the Foreign Office. Some of the brightest and the best go out and bat for Britain across the world. And, he, and that department is being cut by 40%. It is being undermined. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it has a, 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 an eccentric, um, at least, uh, you know, Foreign Secretary that perhaps undermines them. You know, and, and Brexit has been taken away from the Foreign Office and given to a different department. The, the Foreign Office didn't want to come on this evening. No, I, I say, can but understand do you, do you buy this, Jeremy? Shapiro, because in some ways you have a grand vision of Britain as a great power. That, that is, spend more on the Foreign Office. You can have more Royal Yacht Britannias floating around the I'm world. I'm not talking it? about a Royal Yacht Britannia. What I'm saying is that, is that actually we should, we should hold our head up high and be more confident about ourselves. Actually, less arrogant, but more confident. Uh, well, look, that's, that's great. And I think all of the things that you talked about are, in fact, British strengths, but I can tell you that they're more keenly felt inside this country than outside the country. <laughs> and you know, when I was in the State well, Department, we didn't really focus very much well, on that. We did we barely noticed it. And I think if you look at, for example, the the article in to, in the New York Times about the G seven meeting, yeah. it barely mentions Britain. It barely well, I mentions did look at well, several of them in it other barely countries. Barely mentions they Boris They did all Johnson. mention Boris Johnson's they, sanctions. They mentioned plan, him. But, but it they, was but buried under it was the, buried and he's not it wasn't seen as the story. The story was the US, Russia, the Italians. It was not uh, it was not Britain. And and yet if you read the, the British press's coverage of it, it's all about Boris's failure. It's, it's about the tactics that you were just covering. And I think all of that, all that you said is exactly right, but it misses the larger strategic well, okay, picture. So let's, let's, is there is let's, this let's focus on, on, on the Middle East. You know, our historic links with the Middle East are very profound. You know, and we have an understanding of the Middle East and the subtleties of the Middle East that, frankly, America doesn't. And, and, and as a close ally of America, we can you know, hopefully, if we were prepared to stand up to the president and say, no, Mr. President, you got that wrong. Actually, this is a better way of approaching things. We would have more clout than we but do. But that is, that is the, the key point, is, is does our clout come? Will anybody listen to us if we actually deviate from what the US says? Or basically, does it look like we're quite powerful? Because essentially, we're the deputy to the US sheriff, and so everybody listens to what the deputy well, says. Because we agree. So your, your contention is we, we can disagree with the US, and the US will listen. Well, do you agree with that? I mean, there's ways and ways of doing it. Obviously. But, 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 you know, and you pick your battles. 
and you don't disagree on everything. I want to hear Jeremy's yeah, answer on this. Well, this is <laughs> well, I mean, look look at what happened in in right even before the Trump administration took over on the on the Israel Palestine issue. Yeah, exactly. The government betrayed its position from a week before. Yeah. Um, and essentially attacked the Obama administration. Yeah on a Security Council resolution that the, that the UK government had, had, drafted, had voted for. Had and, drafted and, drafted and voted for. <laughs> had drafted and voted for. And what to me that indicated is that the UK government was afraid to yeah. be separate from the new yeah. American administration. And you can say that that's this government's it's a bad tactics. It's a sellout. And maybe it is. No? Maybe it, it is. Emily but I think it's indicative of a larger problem that any UK government yeah. would have. Emily Thornbury, do you think it would be difficult for politicians to tell the British public what Jeremy Shapiro is telling them? <laughs> Look, guys, we're a med you know, we're as important as Norway, or uh, more, more important than Norway, but we are a medium sized power in the world we're not like, going to be able to swag around. Would you find it difficult to make that case to the British public? I wouldn't say that we have the same influence no. as Norway. I mean, I genuinely wouldn't. I mean, obviously, we're not a superpower. Clearly, we're not. But I think that we have and we should continue to have much more, much more influence than the size of our country because of all the positives that we have in our history and culturally that we have and our connections. And we need to take advantage of that. I mean, for example, our place in international institutions is pivotal. You know, we have, I mean, if you can use this phrase if you want to, you know, we've, we, we've been responsible for sort of legal imperialism in the way in which we've exported human rights around the world. You know, we drafted the human rights, you know, that is now being used used throughout, which is why it's so damaging for this government to say, actually, we're not so keen on human rights do, as we used to be. Do you think soft power is more important than the defence power at the moment, Jeremy? Give us some advice on how to maintain our great power status. Is it spending more on defence uh, or is it the aid budget which does it? Well, look, I mean, I think that soft power is what people appeal to when they, then they want to talk about a, a, a power asset which is too nebulous to actually pin down. <laughs> I mean, I think there is wow. something real wow. to it. There is something real to it, but it's a little bit hard to get your hands around. I think, though, if we, and it doesn't move G7 meetings. If we want to have, if we want to be heard above the cacophony of noise on foreign policy, if we were to have a foreign policy that was a little bit more principled and predictable, and people could understand the basis on which we were making decisions, I think that we could have, you know, a great deal more influence. Than we, we need do. to leave it there. Thank you both very much.